Are we ready? We've got four right. people with body parts. Welcome to episode four of the Inkbox podcast, where four people with penises try to convince you that life is pretty okay. You know, you can go to Denny's sometimes, you can wear a hat. We're going to talk about some video nerd shit with Tyler and Austin. We're going to te- check Steve's reflexes with this, but we're going to start the show. <laughs> I did it. I finally got Steve. I finally got him. My 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 hand never hit the table. Got it. So that's 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 we're, that keeping, was a good, we're keeping that way. Subtle troll, Steve. I, I love like it. That. But how you doing, Tyler? Good man. How are you guys? Dude, first of all, like just to be able to come and hang out with you guys, thank you for playing my fucking birthday. That oh, yeah. was oh, an absolute fucking that blast. That was so much fun. Yeah. yeah it looked fun. It looked fun. I, I swallowed a toothpick. I have a baby, so you did swallow yeah, a toothpick. Yeah, I swallowed yeah. a toothpick that night. <laughs> You, you know those, you know those, uh, the taquitos, right? They had the toothpicks in them. They each had one in them. Those are so, rad. They're, they're large toothpicks. Right, no, so, no, no. So, so I got tricked. I didn't swallow a toothpick because I wanted to swallow a toothpick. There were, there was a, there was one toothpick in each of them, and I grabbed one and I took the one toothpick out. But it turns out that one had two in it. So I swallowed it, and then I just started gorging food because I was like, oh, I gotta pad this while it goes through my That's intestines, and then. The entire night I was panicking that I was gonna die. Yeah, it was pretty your own fate at that. Point. Everybody kept googling. And showing me the Google results for like like swallowing a toothpick and it terrified me the entire time. It's always the worst shit. It's always the worst shit. You shape. think you'd be used to having wood in your mouth at this point? No, Dude, no that, you never you never get used to it you because know? dicks. That was the first time I had seen you guys. <laughs> that was the first time I'd seen you guys as Magdos, and like I was blown away. Like I was like, holy fuck! Like why are we not friends? Like. And sure enough, over since then, like I've hung out with you guys every, if not every weekend, every other weekend now. Yeah, it's been nice. And it's been fucking cool. Like, yeah, I like you, Tyler. I like he's you guys a, a lot. <laughs> he's a Raider fan. Wait a minute. Wait, let's go. That's speaking of, let's we, we didn't go. we introduced four people with penises, but who, Justin, who are we who are we speaking with today? I said, podcast? did I say did I say Tyler and Austin? You did nothing. I I did not. Okay, so we've got Tyler Silva here. Tyler, tell us about yourself. Uh, I play in a band called Squared. I play in a band called Rundown Roommates, and I am the host of a podcast called The Rundown with Silva, and uh, it's all made possible with the power of my guy, Austin Estes of the Estes Creative over hey. here. Hell yeah. Yes. Um, also made possible by Fleshlight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We forgot to, we gotta, we gotta mention <laughs> Fleshlight a lot here. <laughs> We're trying to get, trying to get that Fleshlight money. Yeah. You got to. They Colorado's have, Fleshlight. We have loads of it. We want to fuck your products live on the podcast. No, but meeting you guys has been super cool. It's been, um, really eye opening. Um, you know, you guys do a lot of the same things that me and Austin tried to do. Mm-hmm. And it's nice. You know, when we started our podcast, The Rundown with Silva, we didn't know anyone that was doing it, and we did it during the pandemic. And to meet you guys and be like, "Yeah, we're doing we're doing something similar." We're like, get the fuck out, because we have no idea how to do this. And Steve's like, "I know how to do it." I'm like, "Holy shit, really?" Barely, yeah, dude, <laughs> barely. We're faking if, if it till we're making it. If yeah. you guys are barely doing it, we were never doing this. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I just, I just meant like Steve knows what he's doing. Like, he's he's learning this on the fly. Like, I talk a lot of shit about him, but look at all the wires. Yeah, look at all this shit. All those do stuff. <laughs> All they, of yeah. those dudes. We got something. the bat signal. Steve like <laughs> understands <laughs> what each of these wires do. It's very impressive. Yeah, I told him I wanted to start a podcast, and I showed up, and he just like all of this was done up like some like layer. He said, "I got you." Yeah, we're not gonna have There's that. There's a pink light and a blue light. Theoretically, they're you know intentional. It's called bisexual lighting. Oh, nice. It's yeah, all I, inclusive. Yeah, lighting. I learned about it from a girl who shoots like uh, the woke mob strikes woke again. Woke. She like shoots like sexy videos of herself, and she's like, she's like, yeah, it's called bisexual lighting. You well, I'll be honest, women? me and Austin are bi curious of your guys' setup, and it's been very educational. I prefer the term heteroflexible. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to the pun box. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you guys for playing my birthday. It it, it meant the world to me. Honestly, Dude, I had so get, much fun. You yeah. got like you had like nine bands play. Who's uh, Morgan's Bluff was there? Dude, it was fucking no, nuts. A ton of bands. Yeah, t- it was the ton of bands Critical Miss opened it up yeah. Tele- television trash show those are fun it was, yeah. it television, was absolutely television mishap <laughs> censor television they're on tour right now shout out them I love yeah, them yeah I hope you guys are having fun in I think they're in Texas right now nah they're going to yeah yeah and yeah. then they're going to New Orleans um, but no honestly um, like it was it was really cool um there was one band that I asked for for my birthday show because uh, I, you know, I share this. Well, you got nine. Yeah, I got nine. <laughs> I heard You're there was only before, so I was blown away. Um, but I specifically asked for Morgan's Bluff. Um, you know, I got a little bit of history with those guys and and whatnot, and uh, you know, they play a little bit of uh, music similar to like what Rundown Roommates does. 
And then to get all these like additional bonuses on it was fucking amazing. And to see you guys, because all I do at, at the time, I just heard rumors about you guys. Like, you got to meet these guys. Like, there's Justin, there's Adam. There's, We're an enigma. Like, there's Steve. <laughs> and uh, I was like, dude, I definitely got to fucking meet these guys. And the more me and Justin hang out, I'm like, Raiders fan? Oh, yeah, like, the Gaslight Anthem? Yeah. Like, it, it, it's been really, it's really sort of cool. And to yeah. watch you guys play music now, I've seen you guys two or three times now at this point. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Like, not only that, like, they're really, really good. <laughs> like, you guys are really taking off. Like, it's congratulations me. to all of you. It's all me. <laughs> it yeah. is all yeah. I can tell. Someone's got to take credit, I guess. J- Justin's yeah, the know. talent. He writes all this yeah. stuff. Adam just looks good. He just... he. Yeah. He spends 45 hours a day in the gym. Yeah. I'm the resident fuck yeah. boy. He's the talent. <laughs> you got to have something pushing through. That's our... That's well, our, when are you going to come through my neighborhood? Wait, <laughs> <laughs> okay, is that an innuendo? Anyways, yeah. thank so you guys I, for playing the show. I really yeah, appreciate yeah. it. Of course. Yeah. It, was a, it was a fun show. So I want to hear more from uh, Austin here, who's not in a band. I'm not in a band. So I'm you're usually behind guy. the scenes. So I want to put, yeah. you, put you on the spot. In the so I live in the shadows. I'm the, uh, I guess, the resident video guy in the scene. No. Um, not a lot of people know me, uh, but there's a good amount of people that do, and they use me to their advantage. You've got and excellent hair. Yeah, you thank look amazing. You. I work Your beard is better than Drew's. I work. <laughs> I work very hard. On Sorry, Drew. <laughs> is that uh, are those natural curls? Yeah, amazing. Yeah. It's been about. I uh, started growing them out during the pandemic. I got uh, married in uh, 2001. We were gonna get married in 2020, and we pushed. 2001. It back. Sorry. What, what happened in 2020? Did I say, did I you said 2001. <laughs> Sorry. 22 years ago. 2021. Oh. <laughs> I was gonna say you don't look that, like what yeah. were you into when Sorry. I was eleven. You were <laughs> two thousand one. That's uh, flashbacks to my my birthday is nine eleven. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you were born on nine eleven? Yeah. Like two thousand one. No. No. He's just, you, when you say 9-11, you could mean any 9-11. Sorry, let's move you on. You just yeah. remember. <laughs> yeah. um, so Never I, forget. Uh, I was going to not cut my hair for the wedding, just let it grow, <coughs> blah, blah, blah. We pushed it back a year because of the pandemic, and then it started to look okay, so I just let it go. Irish? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Are you single? Because Adam's single. Am I single? I just <laughs> yeah. talked about my wife. So no. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Are, oh, are what, you a swinger? Why don't you listen when people talk? No, no. Pineapples are right. I was trying to make a joke my, about my how Adam's household. like basically flirting with you. Yeah. We, I don't know it how happens, much. Uh, it happens a lot, so I'm, I'm used Adam to it. Adam flirts with you a lot? People think I yeah. flirt with people, but that's yeah. just me being friendly. Just Dude, genuine. It, just a so genuine. So when you make out with somebody genuine. after you play a show with them. <clears> I'm just being nice. You're just being, you were just being, all right. Hey, good show. That's a gentlemanly thing. That's a gentlemanly thing to do. After we play around a golf, we... We go make yeah, out we go make out. Yeah. This is my regular golf partner. Yeah. And like, sorry, I'm Amanda. joining you guys. By like the way. we were talking yes. earlier about like not wanting to disappoint people and like doing things just for the sake of not disappointing, even if it's not the right thing to do. Like I'll I'll, I'll jerk people off and I, I won't even want to, but it's because it's what they want. It's I'm what giver. they want. Yeah. You never get yeah, a hand job from a, Adam because it's always pleaser. obligatory. I guess we should play more shows together. That'd be cool. Um, <laughs> <good segue. laughs> That'd be cool. I mean, <laughs> whatever saucy. band Adam's in, put him on every show, please. Yeah. He gives out hand jobs. No, but it, it's cool. Uh, me and Austin, uh, we were roommates before. Uh, I mean, when I was just really starting to get into the scene and like doing bands and things like that. And he was just really dipping into photography. And because uh, I've known his wife uh, since high school. And when she met him, it was instant. Like, we just, like, what do you do? What do you do? Like, we we really just started mending like right away yeah like as yeah, soon whole, as i met you the whole little crew that we had so my my wife does photography she has since uh pretty much high school uh just out of college she started doing family photography stuff like that and um we started dating and our friend dave wanted to shoot a christmas special and i had been taking photography of things like downtown phoenix and just you know landscape stuff like that and uh our friend dave wanted to shoot a christmas special one year and I said why the fuck not right I said I have all the tools to make this happen let's figure it out <laughs> you know so it was just a production bigger than I probably could have asked for mm-hmm. uh, and uh, it just all stemmed from that and I just got the bug and now I uh, you know. yeah and this Christmas special is on YouTube it's called the FOLX squared Christmas special. So Gio was, talked about that on the first episode. Fuck Gio. Add that to the counter. Oh, dude. Don't. Okay. So first of all, like Gio has been talked about on every episode. I know, dude. And like, but I, I, I had, but he did talk about that Christmas special. Literally. No, I'm yeah, yeah. like, let me just come out and talk about you. Everyone's saying fuck Gio. I feel sorry for Gio, man. Like, there's only so many people with his condition, and I don't want to get too into it. But like, you know, the band shows up early. We put our jewel rags, uh, jewel rags on our 
no shoulder. So because uh-huh. he always wants to give us a hug, he's always late, and he's like, "Hey guys," <laughs> and then he like you know kind of drools on our shoulder, like, "Hey buddy," like you know, "What's the next song?" Like he's like, "I want the next song to go." Like I kind of got that make a wish vibe yeah. from Gio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. and and like so we love him times. so much, and we just want him to be okay. Like we want him to feel welcome. You know what? Like I said, he's a special guy, dude. And like Super shout out to special. Veronica, you know shout out to his Super family. Gio, Gio, if you're Gio, listening, I think you're fine. We're so proud of you. Yeah, Gio, keep doing you. You can draw right on my shirt. You're doing such a good. He loves loud sounds. Can we all give a little bit of clap for Gio yeah. real quick? I've got plenty of the clap for Gio. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. Anytime you want it. You know, he's such a special guy, and we all just want to, like... I hope Texas is good to you, buddy. We just want to You're raise... doing a good job touring. Yeah, dude. Like <laughs> TV Tragedy guys, thank you so much for taking on that. Not all, anyway. Not all heroes are that level cakes, of buddy. <laughs> yeah. We love you, buddy. Good... Good job, buddy. Keep keep going. So you started off with a Christmas special. How many? And so now you do like music videos exclusively, yeah, I, uh, or how many have I, you done? I have a day job, unfortunately, right? Ooh. So um, I, I don't that. advertise as much as I want to or should, you know, for my video stuff. So I kind of take it as it comes. Um, and a lot of the homies reach out and say, "Hey, uh, we're ready for the, the um, our first music video." A lot of times, mm-hmm. and uh, I. Help them facilitate, you know. Their, do you just record, things. or you do you help out like with uh, like directing? I do like it that? all. I'm a one man show, so they give me the idea, mm-hmm. of what they want, and I say, okay, this is what I can accomplish, you know, with that, because everybody's ideas are, are sometimes stupid, very long. <laughs> you, can, say you, it. you can achieve. We a lot have of dumb it, ideas. Right? You all can the achieve time. a lot of it, but um, <laughs> one thing I kind of like uh, is they give me the idea, and I get to mold it in a sense to say, okay, this is what is logical, or this is what is practical, you know, and it could be exactly what you wanted, you know, mm-hmm. and, and and that's awesome. Then everybody's happy. So what kind of gear you got? Uh, I just shoot on Canon DSLRs. Nothing too fancy. Again, uh, the no reds, no reds, no reds. Um, I get by with with what I can with that. And reds are expensive. They're, expensive. They're so expensive. Yeah. I'd like to uh, rent one and work with one, you know, but um I just I started on Canons and I'm in the R, R series right now. So Canons are um, good. There's a couple. I of do them need here. to venture out of that because it's. I know nothing about any of this uh, conversation. Yeah. Keep oh, going. Keep going. Just, I'm I'm like, keep going. just me and Tyler I'm gonna kiss each other. Way guys talk about this. Mm-hmm. Pretty much doing video through a, a camera, like a photo camera. Mm-hmm. Camera. They're and all so good now. I, I feel like you. Yeah, you can they've get gotten away with a lot that. better because people are using them for that, and it's a lower entry point cost wise. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I need to venture out into camcorders and movie camera, you know, this in a, but this you're so, in a line of stuff. You're, We're so, gonna, you're so resourceful, dude. Like, at anything that you use, you're like, well, how can I make it look the best it's ever looked? And and you really go the extra mile for a lot of us. I mean, I, th- I think when we all start a band, right, you know, as all being band guys, him being a video guy, we always, like, you know, start recording stuff. Like, so how do we get this to sound the best we ever sounded? And, you know, I'm sure you guys can attest to, like, the first project that you recorded to whatever you record now probably 10 times better you know and i just see austin like blow that away like mm-hmm. when he records something the next thing he records it's not 10 times better it's 100 times better mm. and like he goes the extra mile he's like let me learn how to do this let me learn how to do this and he really goes out there and performs and for him to go do that you know we started our, uh, the rundown with silva during the pandemic i realized i missed a lot of parking lot conversations with bands and he's like i'll help you capture that and then we just started, like, I just watched him go to work, like, making these things look in, like look amazing for what we had. The best we could. Yeah, the best we could. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, that's always good. the most fun, like, just taking whatever you've got at your disposal yeah. and just start trying and to run it, with it. If it works, it's fine. Yeah. You better be texting Gio. But we're I do need to. I was about to call you out. <laughs> we're about to call me out on that? Sorry. No, you're but good. we're going to. Sorry, uh, we're boring you, Justin. No, so, yeah, no. So, uh, <laughs> you guys will have, like, these buttermilk voices and. Sorry, I was getting. I was. I was, I was, gonna, I was gonna, he was checking out. He was like, "I'm gonna be over here." For no, just Wait, I did. Like, I did straight up did say, "I don't know anything about this nerd shit." What the fuck are you talking about? I play sports and drink beer and, Amen, and really? touch, <laughs> touch butts. But we're actually gonna we'll promo your shit here. Uh, you okay. you shot that uh, the rundown roommates yeah, uh, that. video, and that was all like a single shot. Yeah, so it was a single take, which I like to use practical effects or, in this case, no effects. It was just the mm-hmm. band in the studio. But you I had no effects in the studio. That's dope. We had no effects in the studio. Yeah, they were in the corner. They were, <laughs> they were just catch there. Them on video. Fat they, Mike was like, that's pretty dope. <laughs> yeah, they were really good at staying off camera. Um, but I wanted to use as many rooms in the studio as possible. The, the studio that we had or that was available at the time, Cosmic Soup, had so many little. It was an old office building. 
So it had little nooks and crannies. And all yeah, and how many stuff, so. how many rooms did we use? Because we used the One, control two, room, we used the live room, we used the second drum room, four, we used the four, green five. screen room, and then we used another. We used like over five rooms. It looks great, yeah. and it, the fact that it was one shot. That's why we're gonna we're gonna pop it on the screen. So if you're listening to this right now, sorry. I mean. Go to YouTube, get good. I don't know, but we're gonna <laughs> we're actually gonna, yeah, scrub. we're gonna show it on here because it's 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 fucking amazing. So uh, all all you bands that are looking for shit, I'm sure you gotta pay them something or or kiss them. I don't yeah, know. I think, Joe, I think think Joe said something about five dollars. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. I would put that on the record. That's not great. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Everyone. Sorry, ESJ. It's five dollars and a blowjob. But yeah, let's uh, let's watch it. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna comment on it too because why the fuck not? People that are listening should be able to. To get something out of this. So go ahead, uh, uh, roll the clip. I just farted. Nice. <laughs> so we're commentating this, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. so this uh, it, this took about probably Remember 50 runs. Well, we, we only did so many. We did one run through, right? We, how much, like, I'm talking about planning through run throughs. Planning. So we did we did 50, 50 attempts, essentially, to, to base the pattern of where we're going, the track of where we're going. So we just built off. I said, okay, where do you want to start? And I said, okay, where do you want to go next? And then where do you want to go next? And we filmed that to there. And then filmed that to And then we filmed that to the next one. We just started over like a Rube Goldberg machine, whatever that was, where one thing led to the next one, the next thing. We had to start over every time. So I just wanted to point out that Tyler rhymed the words die with die in this song. Uh, it's die with died. So Die with die. But okay, still. That's better. It's a different word. Yeah. I think Drake did that. So yeah. I'm, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't didn't realize we were comparing Tyler that's, Silva to that's Drake. That's I mean, we're pretty close. Rap energy. We're pretty close. I mean, they're both pretty cool. So, so. so I have a question. Did the drummer have to be quiet? Um, well, yeah, so I would say for sure. Um, he was trying to hear what we're doing. You can uh, see, you can, you can, he looks like he's playing lighter. Yeah, he's playing super light. Now, were you drinking that in chorus, or was that water? No, I never. So, like, as a performer, um, I have to drink to perform. You see me drinking here. Um, drinking is actually probably like the best aspect of me. Like, yeah. it's where I'm most open and whatnot. Um, marijuana or any other substances, like I'm really shut down and quiet. Mm -hmm. um, but some of the best version of myself is actually after a few, a few drinks. I just have a little bit of For sure. Time. To all you sober listeners out there, um, yeah. give it up. It's dumb and you're more fun drunk. Yeah, well, no, I wouldn't say that. It's just, uh, it's, it's, it's the way that I have, like, the confidence built. Like, and, uh, Everyone likes you more hammered. Oh, probably. So I'm assuming when the camera's not on you, like, I just imagine, like, you're just running super fucking fast we to get to your next button. Yeah. We are sprinting. Like, he's, like, right behind me, holding on to my back, to the back of my collar. Yeah, and, and Austin's, like, saying, like, go, go. Like, he's, like, giving us like, a quick push. Okay, 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 there, boom, boom. All right, come with me. Follow me, follow me. And I'll we made you. sure, too, that in the green screen room, we had a bunch of our friends playing. So you might see FOL, Birth of Monsters. Uh, you'll see a, in there. Yeah, <laughs> contradictions in there. That's but we great. wanted to make sure that, like, we wrote this song during the pandemic. Like, this is a whole pandemic thing. We This whole song is about how we miss our friends. We're not, like, taking, like, a political point on anything. We're just, like, we miss you guys. Dude, that's adorable. This is such a great video. It is a really entertaining video. I wanted to make it feel like... The song is... The song is... Man, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sorry. I wanted to, but no, the, the, the videography in this is amazing. If you watch here, you can see us. This is where we sprint. Run! So I, yeah, I as that. fast as we can. So that's Guyver, one of the most amazing rappers in our fucking little scene cameo. right now. Yeah, little cameo. Now. Did you make it in time? Yeah. Just barely. Barely. Just barely. That, see, that was dope. Mm -hmm. That was yeah. sick. This was a whole lot of, like, walking around, like, all right, all right, all right. Like, let's just go for it. Mm. And then once we went for it, we're, like, done. It was, like, probably a four-hour process. It was a four-hour uh, Yeah, four we, hour we had a four-hour day. For sure. So but, the was that the first take? Like the first? Did you guys like like one try? Like first try that? I think once we figured so, it out, like once we figured out, okay, this is exactly how it goes. Once so we like, tracked it, which we did test footage and we actually played to the song, and did all that up to the end. And then once we got all the way to the end, where they were gonna run out to the front lobby, yeah. we said, okay, we're recording this one. And then unfortunately, Freddie didn't hear me say that. Because <laughs> yeah. he reached out to me after the fact, and he was like, "Hey, can we redo? Uh, can we refilm uh, my drum part?" We said no. And I go, <laughs> I, "No, I can't. I yeah. just, I, I gotta cut it." Is that why you were I laughing when it. I when I said something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, because we see that they, they, it's off in the drums. Sorry for calling you out, brother. I didn't mean that. <laughs> nah, it's okay. No, I mean, I did, but I'm. So, I didn't mean it. I to didn't, be. I didn't but it's like that. That's the magic of the band, right? Is that like we're all human. Like nothing is 
is fucking perfect. Yeah. You know, nothing is perfect. And we don't You should try be being perfect. in my band. We're all perfect. I know you guys I'm are. Kidding. I'm kidding. It's insane. No, I was a, it was a joke. You're, don't you're give not, that to you're me. You're not kidding. Well, if Adam wasn't here, I wouldn't, but yeah. Adam's in your band. <laughs> <laughs> we come to Manicdote shows for Adam. Mm. <laughs> I've no, heard that. I've heard that before. But it, but it was um, it's a really fun process. Like, I will say, and even the homies say this, because you've done Blotter Vision now, you've done TV Tragedy, you've done Us, and everyone's like, Austin is so, so easy to work with. Mm. And, you know. You try to be. You have to be. Yeah. You can't be. Imagine if people were like, yeah, I fucking hate working with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to put together some music videos. I, I think one. you guys I think are going to do great. Yeah, I, I want to do one for our song "Bootlickers." I've got a whole sketch planned out. Nice. We were talking about. We it should a while do ago. it. We should do it with Austin. We should. Do you want to do that? Do you yeah. hate cops? Uh, do I need to hate cops? I think to, no. to to get the video potentially. Then fuck cops. At least I love <laughs> he's like <laughs> Steve. He's like a job's a job. He's like I'll hit my grandmother if you cops. if you all need it. <laughs> are you paying me? Oh, oh, fuck no, cops. Are you paying me? <laughs> fuck the cops. No, I've I worked with Austin a long time, and like anything, something like that comes up. Like, so how do we portray doing this? He's like, I got you. I got you. Let's got sit you. down and talk, and then he'll tell you exactly. He he doesn't. Like oversell you or lowball you. He'd be like, so this is what I can do. Mm. And well, I also hate that people charge too fucking much. I mean, I understand the art is the art, but yeah. I you got to be fucking reasonable. Some of these people out here that are charging for videos are ridiculous, you know. Mm. And I I just I don't feel that's right. So I think it's dope to hear that, especially yeah. like when you're like so I got pretty reasonable stuff. Working yeah, well, like when you're like a new or starting local band and shit like that. Sometimes you see like uh, I know money bands is, with this professional oh, looking shit, and it's like yeah. you don't got the money for that, and people are gonna judge you off of it. So it's super dope as fuck. Yeah. So I got the local, you know, entry fee, you know, but I try to give them the most bang for their buck and uh, quality. And uh, that I was think, that was sick as fuck. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, and with uh, the technology these days, you know, it's it's getting easier. But um, yeah, it's it's fun. I like. I enjoy it. Dude, yeah. and like we get so many compliments on that video, and for the limited equipment that he used, out, you know, was that all one take? Yeah, all yeah. One take. yeah it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I said go, and we started outside, and we walked gnarly. Through, did it all. Yeah. Room changes, everything. There's no cuts, no spices. That's so sick. I can show you the project. Like it's just there. It's just one track. Yeah. yeah, and like you know, like <laughs> as the musician in there, we 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 planned everything out right yeah. and. We were sprinting, you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, yeah there's, a, there's one take where, where, yeah. where for a quick second, you can see you looking calm as fuck, right? But then, like, at the tail end of before yeah. it cuts no, you, you off, you can see, see it. Go, yeah, yeah. like, go! Because <laughs> what? It's like a two and a half minute song, so it's like, how do we get ourselves all in the position? And he planned it out. He really did. Like, he went the extra mile to be like, hey, so this is where you cut out. Like, as soon as I go here, it'd be like my mic stand, right? Mm -hmm. Like, as soon as, like, you see me, and then he goes... You know, and just points at me. That's when I know to run. Run as fast as I can. Mm. And then go there and look normal. It's not easy, but, like, he knew exactly when to do everything. Yeah, you didn't look yeah. sweaty or anything. Yeah, no. You didn't look out of breath. But, yeah, all the bands Watch that are... Watch cops. All the bands <laughs> that, are, that are hitting me up and stuff like that about the podcast. Get, you want to get a nice music video, hit up Austin. He smells lovely, th too. I know you can't, that doesn't really translate through this... Uh, Podcast. We all, we all smell lovely. It's, yeah, it's a <laughs> I do ripe, not. It's I do ripe not one thirteen today. Right now. Oh, dude, I went I to an outdoor today. show last night and then went to the gym this morning and I'm just here now. Dude, dude how nice. was yeah, that? How was the show last night? The show was excellent. Um, yeah, AFI, yeah, tell degrees. us about the show you went to. So I, last night I saw Fear, AFI, and the original Misfits with Danzig, which was just, that lineup is a cream dream for me. Yeah, yeah. I saw Fear at uh, Nile Underground a couple months ago and they just, they were just great. Lee Ving is like a thousand years old and still like just sounds perfect. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, what, what were the highs and lows? So the lows were AFI set, which hurts me to say because AFI is one of my favorite, like top five favorite bands, probably top three. Um, and the, they just were plagued by so many technical issues. Guitar was fucking cutting out. Vocals were cutting out. Fucking something was going on with their in-ears because uh, their drummer was just off time from the rest of the band for mm. like half the set. It was just a it's nightmare. Unfortunate. Yeah, it was uncomfortable. Their logo was all chopped up and weird, like something was in the way of the projector or like something. they have never done it before. Like, yeah, like everything was <laughs> fucked. And like, like they kept commenting on it and like in between songs, there was like a lot of dead air. Anyway, that was a mess. I've seen AFI like four times and this was just like so bad because they're usually so tight original misfits came out and it was like I, I had goosebumps for like 45 minutes straight like just like all this all the songs you'd want to hear 
Danzig sounded just like so fucking perfect, like better than the albums. Um, their fucking energy was fucking great. Like everybody was just like feeling it in the audience. It was it was awesome. Like I've never seen Misfits before, so it's like just a dream come true. And they're like their fucking videographic game is the best I've ever seen. Like usually, just, yeah. Yeah, but not that. Not last night. No, no, the, it was. Oh, it was for, good. For the Misfits. Night. Yeah, uh, okay. for Misfits. Yeah, yeah. Cool. nice. For the Misfits. Yeah, like they, they're fucking. They're original graphics that they had. Like every song had like an original like video graphic playing along with it, That's and awesome. it was just like super cool. Like you know, old horror movie footage like spliced in with like. Talk just about cool an original graphics. band member, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. another band member to have a part of your set, someone that's not playing music, and to make sure it looks good out there. Yeah, I don't understand that responsibility at all. But I don't either. Whole, that's gonna be wild. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but like it was, it was on point. It was so fucking good. I just like it's I, a cool I was idea though. Yeah, like just uh, everything was just like so like synced up and mm -hmm. just like perfect seeming. And like um, I don't think they had a set list because they were just kind of vibing the whole time. And like Danzig kept like going to the audience and just being like, what do you guys want to hear? And he'd be like, I heard hyper moments. Here we go. And I was like, oh, fucking let's Dude, go. So as a musician, <laughs> like, you know, we, we were playing fucking bands and whatnot. I, I feel like I always leave a show with something that I learned, rather it be the way they transition into songs, rather it be the way that they like mm -hmm. maybe do like, I don't know, like some acapella, you know, chorus or whatever. Like, was there anything yeah. that you really took you were like holy shit like maybe we should start doing something like this yes and it was the the like video like the the um yeah the like projector accompaniment so i've got a i've got a friend's band shout out to self-improvement in uh, long beach california it's a post-punk band my friend johnny plays in and i see their footage on uh instagram and like they they do like visual art components to their sets and it just adds this like really like uh, sort of like abstract feel to their shows, which like makes I think more sense for them. Like as a post punk band, it's like surreal and dreamy, kind of like than like us who are like a dorky you know punk band. But I think there's a place for that too. You can still pair something up with that. Yeah, exactly. Like it would be a different vibe. But like I think like that like it just adds so much to a set when you've got like just like noise happening all around. Because like mm -hmm. for me like that's a lot of our sets anyway. It's just like. A wall of energy like i guess like, yeah and a wall of sound like if you have a visual <laughs> component of that too beyond just the band like i think we try, we try our yeah. best but like to have like you know some like edited like cool footage like i've always really fucking liked that like dude I, visuals are sick visuals are super sick and yeah. like like andy warhol ha was onto something right oh right. dude yeah and like as much as i like Every time I feel super jaded every time I do this, but like when I hear my friends talk about like EDM shows or whatever, and you know, like I, in my eyes, I always see like a DJ just go up there and play their playlist. But then when you see what they're doing with like all the laser shows and like the visuals and the graphics, I'm like, holy shit! Mm -hmm. Like it is some wild stuff. I've got well, a, I've got a DJ homie out here. Uh, Fucking shout out Average Joe. I, like I know nothing about the fucking DJ scene. Apparently there's a fucking scene scene because he's popular as fuck out here. I want to have him on eventually, but I don't know. Like the like what I have seen of it. Like it's more of a show than I thought it would be. Steve used to be a DJ, by the way. Just to add to the used to be just to add to the ink box lore. Yeah, look at fucking Steve Ooh, used to like be a, a fucking DJ, DJ back DJ. in the day. Ask Master him about Steve. it the next time you see it. With the headphones on, he looks like a DJ. And then, uh, yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. Dude, what a cool intro. DJ Master DJ. Steve. <laughs> get, 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 get of the what, what was your DJ name, Steve? <laughs> How cool is that? Steve, bro? what was your DJ name? Steve, Steve Edwards. Edwards. Is nice. that, Jesus, it was a serial killer name? I, <laughs> <laughs> Come get serial killed at our show. DJ Steve! <laughs> but you were talking about... Lose uh, a member of your family with DJ <laughs> did <it to> Steve <laughs> Edwards. <laughs> you were talking about AFI having a bad set. Yeah. Which, like, happens with bands. And we had... Uh, we played First Friday mm. recently. And it was. <laughs> Can you talk about this experience? Because you told me off camera. Yeah, but I would so, let's talk about so, the Instagram message too. So yeah, so that, that's that's what I'm calling out out right now. Because like even if I has a bad set, so uh, I wouldn't call it a bad set. We showed up. It wasn't planned well. Like there wasn't a sound guy. We were outside. We were all running off of one circuit. There were two microphones. So we like had more. We had we had fun with it. But I get a message on Instagram to the band Instagram, and it's like, yo, I just saw you guys at First Friday. And by the way, he's like, you know, like, it seems like there was no fucking sound check at all. I could only hear one mic. You guys fucking sucked. <laughs> Thank you. And I was like, Thank yeah. you guys for and coming. I was like, so, so first of all, first of all, like my reply to him, I was like, oh, man, like you just went out of your way to try to make somebody feel like shit. And he's like, well, I was like, how's it? I was like, good luck going to bed tonight. Trying to convince yourself you're a good person. Because I tell you what, 
if you see a band play a bad set, we fucking know. Yeah, we do. Yeah, like, yeah. we know. We're, we're not unaware. Yeah, we're we not unaware of it. Yeah. But also, like, you have a choice. Like, you could shut the fuck up and say absolutely nothing, or you can go out of your way, find them on Instagram, and send a message. Yeah. Just be an asshole and try to ruin somebody's fucking yeah. day. Like, absolutely fucking tell To all you anonymous yeah. internet fucking uh, scumbags out there, just shut your fucking mouth, because yeah. we'll find you. Yeah. yeah. I work in shit. IT. I'll we find you. you. Steve's a DJ, a serial killer DJ, too, so. Yeah. DJ Adam, serial killer DJ. DJ. <laughs> I don't know why I can't Edward. stop doing that. I'm sorry. He'll come at you. But anyway, you know if that guy ever sees that, fuck that guy. He knows who he is. I'm yeah. going to call him out on here. Instagram, but. fucking tough guy. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I won't fuck say a face. name on here either, but there was this fucking kid that um, was in another band at a time, which he was no longer part of because, surprise the story, he was an asshole. <laughs> but he, he goes to a school that I won't name either to become this recording artist. And is this Machine Gun Kelly you're talking about? <laughs> Dude, honestly, yes. if, if, Mach- got it. if Machine Gun Kelly had, like, a really shitty brother that was, like, 12 but was actually around, like, 30, 31. Justin? It- <laughs> I'm sitting here enjoying this story. And this from over here, just an attack from fucking Adam. So, <laughs> so I always, I, 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 like I said, I'd never try to drop this kid's name, and I'm not going to. I'm not going to at all. But we'll drop it on the Instagram later when Tyler leaves. We might. We might. We'll put that shit in the link, the link so in the description. This kid has the audacity. The bass player of my band is at this time dating a girl he really likes. Mm-hmm. And so he is sending like love songs to her, like in a real creepy way. We're like, what the hell? And then we try to make peace with this guy. We're like, hey, man, like, you don't approach situations like this. Like, why aren't you just coming out with us and we'll show you a little bit of the ways of the land? Well, it turns out to be just mean. He's just a mean person. Mm -hmm. And so my bass player and a few of my other friends like Jeremy and whatnot are recording artists. Mm -hmm. And they're putting out bands that we all like, you know, like the bands that are friends of us. Mm -hmm. And... This guy has the audacity to put out like a post like, I don't know why the fuck nobody is recording with me. I'm the best there is. I'm better than way to these guys. And we're like, you know what? We're going to let it slide. We're going to let best it. Best there is, best there was, best there ever will be. We're going to let it slide. Mm. Who so, says that with their whole chest to everybody? Who says that? A lot of now, rap. A lot now of I know that you're a very good friend yeah. of our friend, Kevin, and you can definitely yeah. ask him about this situation. But Kevin, uh, our friend Kevin was in a band called Brain Zap. Mm-hmm. And I watched this kid go in there as soon as they post their new album artwork, which I thought was awesome for their band, Brain Zap. I'm like, I Brain Zap was awesome. I was supposed to be in it yes, for a little bit. Yes, they're mm-hmm. super good. I almost played And them. I see this album artwork come out, I'm like, yes, you guys do your thing. And something snapped in me. I'm not a mean person, but my mean thing just snapped. And this kid has the audacity to go and post on their Instagram, like, looks like it was made on Microsoft Paint. Oof. I lost it. I don't know mm-hmm. what came over me. Like also, I, way to hit on poor people that can only use Microsoft Paint. Right. Yeah. Not everybody can afford Creative yeah. Cloud. Yeah. Right. So I go in. I start like, I, I never do this, but I like started just going after him. I was like, hey, so and so, because I don't want to say the name. <laughs> <laughs> but you I was almost like, did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bro. I, <laughs> it's taking everything. Like your mouth was forming <laughs> a like B said, sound. Yeah. Maybe like Brian. Like I said, <laughs> I'm being nice, you know. And he's like. Looks like it was made of Microsoft Paint. I'm like, well, at least their fucking music wasn't. And, like, I just start leaning into him. I start going, like, I never do this. I would never cyber attack anybody. Mm. But this guy has been harassing my friends for so long. And then he starts going after even more of my friends and saying that all of my bandmates are fucking people that are going to assault him. I'm like, how about this, dude? I call him out publicly. I will pay for it. I will pay a thousand dollars. I do not give a fuck. I will pay all the money that I can possibly get together for me and you to go to a gym and box this out. Hell, right you know now. you can fight him in an alleyway for free, right? Don't care. I, <laughs> oh, I was gonna say. Like, I in case you weren't aware that that's yeah. not an option. I'm sure that's you just legal. fight in an alleyway and it's free as fuck. <laughs> Listen, I just wanted some paperwork. See, you know? <laughs> if you can play yeah, Get yeah, in the right. Ring by Guns N' Roses uh, underneath this story. <laughs> yeah. So I called this guy out and he was like, "Is that a threat? I'm contacting the authorities." I'm like, "It's not a threat. It is me saying if you have something you want to say, you will sign a roster and you will come fight me." Word. Oh. Yeah. Well, that post, I didn't. I thought it was private. It was very public, and the punk scene was like Silva versus beep. 
Well, you know speaking, I mean? of, <laughs> speak, speaking of which, Tyler, we've got a surprise guest for you behind the nose. Let's go. <laughs> Been ready for oh, my whole be life. That's so sick. <laughs> no, man, but God, like, I wish this were Jerry Springer. We're like, well, guess who's here, yeah. son? <laughs> I'm, not sure, I'm not sure how this did, did anything that we were talking about, but like, I really don't like when people are super jaded towards my friends at, no, at the end of the day. Um, none of us do. It's fucked up. Yeah, don't be an asshole. First of all, I don't know, like, who has the balls to, like, to say, like, oh, I'm better than so-and-so. Because one thing about, there like, the go. Phoenix scene, I've been... Like of the scenes I've been it's a in, very humbling scene. It's great. It really is. I get along with all of the bands. I mean, and I'm sure everybody has opinions on who's good, who's better. Like in the back of your heads, you always do. But I nobody feel like says everybody's it. super supportive. Yeah, nobody says it. Yeah. yeah, and like I've been in other scenes where it's like, oh, like this band can't play with this band because they're like they're gonna fight or they'll talk shit to us. Why is he? And that's none of that's here. It's like, all love. All. It's all love. And if I, if it is, and you are being with somebody, I just haven't seen it. You're doing a good job. So check it out. At that. We, we've been talking about. Um, bands uh, with negative experiences for a little bit so we're going to transition to a different segment now a segment i like to call adam's island oh, adam's big game. thank you steve can i take a pause real quick we've got the 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 intro song and that song we are super proud of both of those. Like, mm. they're better Dude, than the songs be. we put out. They're so, <laughs> so good. Those are hot. Yeah. We can hit yeah. us up all day. If you need 10 second songs, yeah, we, do we theme can songs fucking now. kill that. We're, we're, your, we're your guys. That, yeah, we're your guys. There's a whole industry yeah. for that. We need to hear one more time. Yeah, I think we do. Yeah, need to play it one, one more time. time. Please play the song one more time. Oh, here, let me give huh. it the uh, intro. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the Inkbox Sessions. Badass song that comes on when we're about to talk next. So good. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Bet you guys didn't know we could do that. But yeah, anyway, but go, no, go ahead, Adam. That, that's like like 15 tracks of, of me. <laughs> nice. Dude, I think I came over. Was I not over here like the day that you were doing this? Oh, yeah, you, sure. were, you yeah. did come yeah. over. Yeah. And yeah. then you were like, you, uh, Steve asked, like, do you want to do this other song? You're like, I just blew out my vocal cords. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Really yeah. not. No, yeah, that was, that was rough. All right, so this segment, Adam's Island, uh, the idea here is that you are stranded on a desert island. You have one record and a record player, electricity, a comfortable couch, speakers, or headphones. So whoever tossed you on the island is very nice. They give you yeah, all that stuff. Exactly. It's pretty they, they set you up before so they that you can enjoy you. this one album for the rest of your life. But you only get one, as the song indicated. So we're going to go around the table. We're going to talk we're about start, Desert Island Let's start with the videographer. Yes. Oh, Justin videographer. and I are going to every Still episode awesome. have My a different album. One. Video? No, nope. oh, yeah, you get one music video you can watch for the rest of your life. It's supposed to happen to be porno. Oh, <laughs> I, I will say on the last podcast, I decided an executive decision. It cannot be a greatest hits album. It has to be an Ooh, album. Oh, I like that. It, it has oh, to be like it has to be an artist's vision of an album. Like it must be an album. An Go. actual like vinyl album. Like an, just, just, nah, just, just like a studio an album. released album. Yeah. It can be a compilation, I think we decided. <laughs> if that's your go with, thing. But you can't go with Kid Bob. And not a lot of people know. And I showed them to him. Uh, they're called the Bastard Sons. I played with them. Did you really? Yeah, Did I you a, really? Yeah, I no way. Yeah, I played a show with Bastard Sons in like 2012. So no way, so Check dude. this out. Check this out. Dude, that My Pint song goes fucking hard. Oh, my God, dude. Okay, so they haven't really they haven't released anything since 2013. All right? Their last album came out in 2013. Give or take. That was like right when I played a show with them. Sorry yes, about that. If it's my were, fault. Well, they were. <laughs> They're no, like, fuck this guy. We're never I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> but so they have haven't had anything come out in the last ten years, right? I go to hang out with my friend, with our friend Dave at Yucca, and I, it was a Friday night. So I was like, oh, what's what's going on? Uh, it was a Sunday night. It was it was uh, it, whatever night it was. And I was just looking at Yucca to see what was happening. But if there's a show playing, whatever. We were talking about actually for the the golf tournament. Which, uh, side note, we'll talk about a golf tournament later. Yeah. And we still gotta get I to noticed get that the Bastard Sons had just played the night before at Yucca Tap Room. Mm. And I have, I, I missed it. I just fucking missed it because I didn't look in time. And then, and and then they stopped myself. for 10 years. No, they, no. Oh. So that, they, haven't, they hadn't played in 10 years. And all of a sudden, oh, they just, okay, I they're, see what bang, you're they're, uh, yeah. they're touring with Bumpin' Not Uglies, me. with Bumpin' Uglies right now. And I'm um, this close to buying a plane ticket to Indianapolis because that's where they're playing mm -hmm. their next little festival. Damn. It's a twenty dollars show if I can just get to Indianapolis. Indianapolis you know I mean? is a fun town. I've enjoyed my time there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Have you been there? So yeah, we'll I got see. chlamydia in Indianapolis once. Oh, uh, fuck yeah! I, mean, I want to go. I mean, I'll go you should bring the kids. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Come get come come, come get an STD in good old Indianapolis. Come get STDs in Indianapolis. Sorry, come talk about Peyton Manning and so there would be herpes. there'd be that one. If I had to pick a a classic, not a lot of people know it or like it, but 
uh, Fleet, Fleetwood Mac would be. That's great. Uh, I guess Rumors is a good one. Get the mm-hmm. fuck out. The- <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. No, right. they're good. We actually found um, a, a group that does a lot of their covers. Uh, they pick, um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll have to get the name, name for them, but they pick an album and an artist and they tour that. It's like a classic artist. Mm-hmm. So they did Rumors by uh, um, Fleetwood Mac and they're doing the Eagles Hotel California next. They're going to be here in November. But nice. uh, Yeah, so that's, that, that'd be mine. All right. Well, what you got, Silva? Tyler Silva, what is your Desert Island Dude, album? mine is tough. Um, everything influences, like, we're all musicians, right? So everything influences us so differently. Mm. Um, when I heard you say the 59 sound of Gaslight Anthem, like, that was That's almost, like, top tier. And because uh, that was, like, one of me and my uncle's favorite bands before he passed away. It's such a good away. album. I, I have so to choose a different good. one for each episode. Otherwise, I'd choose 59 Dude, sound. Dude, no, time. for sure. I, I feel you on that. And then, like... Um, I, you know, I think about Flogging Molly and all, like, you know, all these other bands that, like, uh, Lucero, like, all these other things that really influenced me. So, I, but I do think about them, like, well, what one hits home the most and what inspires me the most? And I would probably have to say the Boxcar Racer album. Like, mm. it is it is so good. And it is so good in so many Adam's different... going to crucify you for saying anything with Tom DeLonge last episode. I got Oh, I don't know. Sure. I'm not. <laughs> it, it, well, it's oh, just... so you'll, 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 you'll only talk shit about me. Got it. Okay. <laughs> yes, that's exactly how that works. Right. But but the album is so is so diverse. Like, you hear one song that will make you cry. There You hear one song that makes you want to mosh. You will hear one song that hits close to home. You will hear one song that brings you back to a completely different time. You will hear songs about depression. You will hear songs about coming out of depression. Mm. And you will hear songs songs that like make you feel really chill i don't know what it is about cat like thief on that with tim armstrong yeah that's amazing and like something about the most simplest song hearing tom DeLong, mark hoppus and um tim armstrong on this track that is like the simplest track you hear drum loop by travis parker yeah. you know you in like with like limited chords but like for some reason like what they're singing and like the things that they're saying I I don't know. Like it just hits so differently, and it's like very inspiring, right? It's it for me that album is like there's no status quo when it comes to emo or punk or thrash punk. To me, that album really broke this crazy status quo. Like there is no genre. Like you can write whatever you want, and there were things that I felt about that in like the Fifty Nine Sound and um, Outcome the Wolves mm. from Rancid because Outcome the Wolves from Rancid is so like you hear something ska, you hear something thrash. That album something... is so fucking good, dude. Yeah, but the Boxcar Racer one, like, it was just like this modern version of it at, at the time. You know, when it was so relevant and whatnot. Like, Especially at that time, I hadn't heard anything like that. So that was right after I'll say, I'll say this, dude. Like, uh, le- leaving all like punk rock elitism out of out of the conversation, which I think we should all strive to yeah, do. Leave, like, <laughs> yeah, leaving politics out of punk. I go. <laughs> but, like, there, there's, a, like, if you're talking, like, you know, Tom DeLonge, Mark Hoppus, Travis Barker, Tim Armstrong, like, if you're dropping these names, like, there's, like, there's a fucking reason why these bands are popular and have endured for decades. Like, theoretically, they're, they're doing something right. Their music is, like, speaking to enough people that's giving them longevity in their careers. And, like, there's something to that, like that cannot be ignored. Like you, mm. you, like society as a whole has been unable to ignore it. Mm. Like beyond just punk rock fans, like that, it's it's difficult to transcend a scene as a punk band. Period. Well, let me, you know let, what me I mean? let me throw this at you and all of you guys. But like the Don't old throw shit at me, I'll kick you well, off like, this podcast. Well, yeah, <laughs> right now. <laughs> but like when I was younger, this is what I realized: is when I was younger, it was so much easier to be a hater, right? <laughs> like just yeah. hate everything. And the older I get. Even if something's not that good, like rather it be the new Blink album or whatever, like I don't really hate as much. Like I'm like, dude. I, I think that comes from the fact that we had a bunch of like older people like hating on things for us, and we hadn't like formed our own opinions yet. Yeah. yeah. So like, cause I, I remember back in the day being like, being like, oh, cause like, oh, this isn't punk and stuff like that. And I had this idea like I need to listen to like real punk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Discharge. nowadays. Yeah, it, it's like I need to do just jack off the discharge records like all day or something. <laughs> they they want to me. to discharge yeah. records. <laughs> I need to discharge the discharge records. But like as I get older, like now, like in front of like especially playing in Birth of Monsters and stuff, like the music I listen to gets uh, called out or like frowned upon by Drew or Miguel sometimes. But I literally like I've got no shame about like my album last week was the Blink 182 self titled album, dude. Right, well, and, and it's great because you get Robert Smith on it. Like you get like all yeah. that. Like it's it's great. But I have like no fucking shame. Whereas when I was like 13 and stuff like that, there were bands that I liked that 
were legitimately guilty pleasures. Like, I wouldn't say out loud that I liked them. And nowadays, I don't give a fuck. There, I love there should Spears. be no guilty like pleasures. You like. Your pleasures yeah. should just be pleasures. Of As a matter of fact, out Limb Biscuit. Like, don't lie. I don't, but, I don't like but one of, one of the ones, <laughs> I also don't like them. I, I will say, like, actually, when it really comes down, now I'm saying it out loud a little bit more. Like, aside from the Boxcar Racer album, I think my actual Desert Island uh, album is probably Take Off Your Pants and Jacket. This is why I fuck with Silva, bro. right? <laughs> fuck you, like, Drew. Fuck all y'all from the last episode that gave me shit. This is historic. Bro, we you have can't a, lie. a, a like, real-time revision on at, Adam's at, Island. Like, you, you, listen, yeah. like, I should just remember. I've been corroborating. Silva and I going to make out after, as soon as these cameras go off. Yeah, we're probably going to blow each other. <laughs> yeah. But like, I don't want to get I, kicked off YouTube just yet. Is, you there is something special. There is something <laughs> special. And I grew up with a, a bro, like I'm the oldest, right? So I grew up with my younger brother and then my sister. And my parents were actually really fucking cool people. They had all these albums, or whatever. And me and my brother got these Nerf guns and Legos. And my sister got a Hello Kitty fucking CD player. Mm. I'm like, my sister doesn't have any fucking CDs. So what would we do? We would steal my sister's fucking Hello Kitty C- CD player at the age of ten. And my parents had take off your pat, pants jacket. And when we put that on, you just hear the doo 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 from yeah. fucking part two. It's just, it's just on. It's like great. that whole album is just on. It is a whole different, yeah, like, it, it yeah. strikes so different. Mm-hmm. And then speaking about stepping away from punk rock and shit, my actual, my album this week is straight up to Pimp a Butterfly by Kendrick Lamar. Oh, dude, Kendrick dude, that Lamar album is, is the so fucking, it's good. so fucking good. And the thing about like hip, like hip hop, Compared to like what we do, is we can write songs where like like the lyrics are like kind of just throwaway lyrics like so, sometimes. Yeah. Right. With hip hop, like it's very very. I don't want to. I don't want to interrupt you, Adam. I'm so sorry. Um, but when I was young and like I wanted to play punk rock forever when I was in high school, like I just wanted to play with punk rock guys. I didn't know anyone that took music seriously, and I played hip hop guitar for five years. Oh well. And I got to as a 17, 18 year old kid that. This kid, my age, took everything that seriously, and his family did. I got to open up for uh, Slick Rick the Ruler, and I got to open up for the game um, as a guitar player for this guy. And I fell in love with Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole because those were some of his mm-hmm. biggest influences. And though, as a punk rock musician, Sometimes I do feel like I'm like we should really write more verses or choruses with more substance mm. And then you hear something like J. Cole like even singing a song about losing his virginity in high school mm. And you hear something so deep and then you hear like Kendrick Lamar They especially. paint pictures like we, we unlike hate, any of us punk rockers can. when they kill us dead in the streets for show mm-hmm. Dude my my sister and paid, they hate cops just like us too. So yeah, I, dude that that video for all right. Yeah, I've watched that on loop my, yeah, my, but my younger love sister. That album. My younger sister is in her early twenties, and I can't even lie. My younger sister is pretty successful. She is a radio uh, radiologist, so she does uh, ultrasounds for like hearts and things like that. My sister is very successful, so she made her money. Rub it in. And <laughs> you're telling, I didn't say I made. It's like I lost poor effects. Great. But so she made a little bit of her money. You know what I mean? And even though she was pregnant, she fucking took my cousin. Out to Atlanta to go get VIP suite tickets Hot to man. go see fucking Kendrick Lamar, mm. and I love Kendrick, dude. Kendrick, so good. Is he such a lyricist? Has everybody makes... seen Kendrick live? I've raised your hand. Never, seen yeah, never, never. Oh, dude. Oh, you have. You oh. got it. You got to go see. Him. I, I want to it's so bad. So good. Sign up right now. Yeah. It's it's real dramatic. Like yeah. he puts oh, a lot yeah, yeah. of like Speaking performative of, energy. He's a into showman. Yeah, yeah, yeah which showman I'm always sure. I'm always looking forward to Adams. Adam's Island. Mm. What's Adam's your Adam? Island. Yeah, what do you got? Yeah, for us? What do you well, got I, this I, week? I, fuck, man, the I, thing I, is, we have to choose a new one each week for yeah, each episode you, to keep it. You we can't keep saying the same you shit. I made yourself. So you're slowly <laughs> yeah. during each episode, you're just learning. I feel more like more you won this week because yours, like, like yours is just it's real yeah. good. I went from being last place on last week's on the last episode to this episode winning. Fuck it. That's like kind of the story of your life, though. It was like you go from being trash to like somewhat valuable in a heartbeat. After I met Adam. All right, so mine mine this week is going to be um, Good Morning by Alkaline Trio. Oh, great album. Oh, dude, so the year was great 2003. Album. I was uh, in New Jersey. I had just been kicked out of college on uh, Adam, behavior Adam, how old are you? Issues. Sorry, buddy. How old are you? That's a... Who asks a person? Who asks a... Well, you never ask a, a lady bold, that. Yeah, you never you? ask a lady that. All right, oh, go, keep going, 25-year-old Adam. Yeah, thank you. Are you 25? No. Yeah. For, for the rest of his Look life. at that face. Look, I, there's I, no I, way he's older than 26. If you're 25, uh, I'm 40. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
What do you got against forty? Adam, a- Adam, nothing. Adam's aging like a fine wine. I'm aging like milk. <laughs> All right, let's 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 maintain focus okay, here. I turned forty last month, so okay. I am forty. No, you're not. Yes, I am. I'm forty years old, Tyler. You Don't made Adam. You made Adam drink. Forty is the new twenty-one. <laughs> anyway, it's two thousand three. The year was two thousand three. I'm sitting in my father's house because I had to move back in with him because I was kicked out of college on behavioral issues. Meaning I ate a lot of acid and ecstasy and drank a lot. Right. And nice. They, yeah. they got over it real quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, DJ Adam. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I was DJ sitting alone. Acid. I had reconnected with my skateboarding friends. Shout out Steve Denier. Uh, and we started reading a lot of AK Press books together. Uh, specifically a book called Evasion, which I highly recommend anyone listening to this to go read Evasion. Uh, it's a bunch of zines that a person who was hobo by choice put together over a number of years, and it just reads like the most inspiring thing to like uh, subvert capitalism that you've ever read. Um, and we like kind of lived by that for a while, but it, it inspired us to like move out to Arizona. It's why I'm actually here. That book had a lot to do with it, and that album had a lot to do with it, which might not make a lot of sense because that album isn't political or inspiring uh to like that effect necessarily but for whatever reason at that time it really spoke to me i had gotten out of a bad relationship at the time which you know a decent amount of that album is all alkaline tree yeah, I was gonna say, if you're it. listening to a lot of alkaline tree you're probably not the happiest <laughs> yeah in the world. yeah but like <laughs> holy fuck dude like to this day fucking like i can listen to that album and like it just like the the intro riff uh, of the first first song on the album like just fucking like puts me into a state of like just fucking it it just it elevates me like yeah. i fucking love that album front to back it is it is a perfect album can for i ask me. you guys a question um mainly amongst you guys but we like let's not lie the reason that we do these things is play shows write these songs is like we're not normal people and we have a lot of things that are wrong with us what do you think is the thing that makes us feel the most right when we go up there and do things like See that? that I can't put my finger on. Like, oh, I, know, I got it. I I, I, I can tell you what that is for me. Yeah, I'd love to yeah, hear it. For it. It's a for me. It's a it's the same thing that like skateboarding does for me, which is like um, only being focused on what is happening in that moment, being present and experiencing life in that moment. Because for me and a lot of thinking people, which I will say is like most punk rockers, because we're good people. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, we we live in our fucking heads too much, and like we're just we're we're always we're always somewhere else potentially and just thinking about shit and like being on stage you don't have time for that you're focused on the task at hand just like skateboarding which i think was why like you know being a musician and skateboarding kind of like do the same thing for me dude i feel the same way um i love my girlfriend to death and she's the fucking best uh she's way too good for me honestly we'll clip this part out so you can send it to her oh, it's okay <laughs> no that that's yeah. so sweet nice. dude that's no awesome. no she she's too good to me and i i feel bad because as a musician, like when I feel most comfortable, I am behind a microphone or I am on stage or I am writing a song. And then in most of my other life, like my home life, like I am a pretty numb human being. Like I'm, I'm very cut off. And she is so accommodating to what makes me be me. And, uh, you know, I lost a lot of that during the, when the pandemic was happening. Mm-hmm. Like I wasn't myself really. Mm-hmm. And she is so accommodating. She's like, you need to be on stage. Like, I need the real you of you to be there. I need you to be present. Like, go play a show. Go to band practice. Go do podcasts. And it's like, I'll, I'll be honest. Like, as a musician, I feel like I do have, like, this weird, like, mental illness being a public figure. See, I, I feel like I get, like, kind of imposter syndrome about it as a thing. Like, because, uh, I mean, like since this podcast and the manic dose and stuff coming out, like I've gotten relatively more popular here and people keep telling me that it doesn't feel fucking real. Right. Like, yeah. Like people like, uh, I don't know what it is about music, but like playing live, especially because a lot of people are talking about how, um, these days it doesn't make sense to play live in your own. It's like, well, I fucking need to. Cause like, I'll tell I, you exactly what it is, dude. I'll tell you exactly <laughs> what it is. And you being my friend is that people love you. And it's that's, not, that's fake. No, it's, it's fake. not. No, it's, it's not. Fake. No, it's not. Justin. No, dude, I'm gonna tell you right you now. Make me cry. Come, Come on, dude. Cry on this. Let's like, make Justin so cry. Now I'm my... talking to you. Shut, shut up. Make you I'm gonna cry. talk to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna be able to cut me off on this. <laughs> it's like this is a weird thing that us as musicians and like us as a whole, like we have to accept. And it's not easy for us, right? We all come from something fucking really different. Mm-hmm. We all do. We're not normal people. 
And one Austin's thing that's just hard, sitting there hey, like, I'm, talking, I'm not even in a band. I'm normal yeah, as fuck. Yeah, no, dude, well, Austin is, Austin is a prime example. Yeah. Austin loves me. You know what I mean? Oh, oh and, do I? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, no, but like, put fucking words in No, my mouth. dude, but like, as musicians, like, it's weird. It's weird that we're loved, right? All of a sudden, we mm. are loved. We come from all sorts of different things, different whatever, and the people that we really, really respect love us. And it's weird. It's weird, right? So we have to figure out how to make this balance of, like, we're up there, and then we are also at home. Mm. You got kids. You have a fucking, like, different life than when you're not on stage. Everyone has something different going on. And we chase this weird aspect of when we're on stage. A lot of people love us. A prime example of that is, uh, like, so, like, uh, my mom My mom died. When my mom died, uh, we had a show planned for, like, three days after that, right? And, like, I didn't want to... Uh, I don't want to cut off the show or like say no to it. So I was sad as, as all fucking hell. Like, right. But we go up there and I play and it was, we're playing as Night of the Spiders. And for like the 40 minutes we were on stage, I wasn't sad. And it was only for that 40 minutes. Yeah. Like, I didn't think about anything sad. I mean, right when we were done, back to being sad as fuck. But like, mm -hmm. do you ever think, uh, like, what made you push through? Like, what was like a huge part of that? Like, there, there's something that made you push through. Oh, that's the thing. Like, I'm not good at being at like ser about searching about what. It, I, like, I there's, just know that like I was looking forward to playing a show. There's also like there's something I have to say. There, there's something about like being like a band, like and like being with like the the people like who you're in a band with. Like, and it's not always this way, but like I feel like this with with you, mm -hmm. Steve and Gene. Like, where we're like we're like a single unit. Like everything I experience like can be shared amongst the band. Like I go yeah. through some like shitty life experience, and yeah. like you all share that with me. Like every right. time you go through, like when when your mom died, dude. Like we yeah. we all went through that. Like and we all like distributed that energy together. That's what yeah. makes bands good. Like yeah. uh, you can tell when somebody plays a show together. Like, are we fr are, are those guys friends or do they just show up to practice, play for an hour, then split? Like because I've been, yeah. we all been in those bands. Yeah, there, there are yeah. bands. Like Austin's that. a yeah. prime Even example of that. That's not in a band. I would I already be tell. hanging out with Adam, Steve, and Gene. Like even if we weren't playing music, we're already hanging out, and it's like, oh, we got guitars, let's do shit. Dude, Austin's sure. a prime example of that. And me and you have talked off camera about this, like how you losing your mom, and I, I lost my uncle a yeah. year ago, and he was the closest thing I had to a father. And you know, Austin knew him very well too. Like we were all friends, and yeah. when I lost like the closest thing I had to a father. You know, Austin was probably the closest thing I had to, you know, an understanding with. And Austin has an understanding of how I express myself. And I'll be honest, like, even some of my closest friends, they don't even have an understanding of how I express myself when I'm sad, mm. you know? Or and I even see you when you're sad because you don't show it. Yeah. And so he's like, let's go golfing. Let's go do these let's things. Go golf. Let's go golfing. Whole, bring out the whole golf Bring course. out the lobster. No, but he, <laughs> like, he knew exactly what to do. You mm. know what I mean? And you're only blessed with so many friends, no matter what you believe in, you know, you are blessed with friends that are in front of you that can really, really be there for you. So you don't fucking fall into drinking habits or drug yeah. habits. Right. Like, yeah, I, I love to drink. I love to drink. I didn't associate drinking with a bad part of my life. And it's because I could go golfing with Austin. It's because we could come up with new projects. And it's because someone knew what I was dealing with. And even, uh, I love my girlfriend to death, but it's like, I'm not a vulnerable person unless I'm behind, like, my guitar or my microphone. It, we're, we're a different breed of human being. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to be us. It's really not easy. Who's calling you? Well, I have to answer it, huh? Who is it? Yeah, Fuck yeah. it. Put him on the air. I have to answer. Put on the speaker. Put on the speaker. Oh, hold on, hold on. Put it on speaker. The rule is I have to answer the phone. Hello? Hey, what's going on? What's up? Is, this is my brother, Ricky. You're on Wiener and the Butt. You're on Wiener and the Butt, man. <laughs> Austin, take Hell over yeah. for a second. What's up, buddy? I'm filming this right now. How's, uh, how's everything going? Everything, you know, everything's going, pretty, going pretty damn good. Yourself. Pretty damn good. So I wanted to, sh speaking of which, uh, I've been promoting them on social and stuff. My brother in California is in a band called South Six, and they're badass, and I'm trying to bring them out to Phoenix eventually. Go ahead, uh... Uh, do me a favor since I got you on the phone. Tell Phoenix something about me. Oh, man. Okay. Um, I bet they haven't heard this story. Embarrassing. So yeah. when Justin and I were in a band a long time ago, uh, we what? played at a place called Copper Rhino with a bunch of punk bands that were way harder than us. And uh, after we finished our set, we got into the crowd and we started moshing. I stopped because they were covering Bro Him and it was just going on and on. So I was tired. <laughs> Um, next thing I know, uh, I'm being hit in the forehead by something, 
and it turns out it was Justin's forehead. Um, and so I went over to check on him, and he had a big old goose egg on oh, the front dude, that of was like, like, his forehead for like four days. And I you were so fucking unfazed. You want to hear so, You want to hear something crazy? It, it was just talked about five minutes ago. But what show? What was the band that was playing at that show? Uh, Garbage Barge and or Trash Boat. Who else? The Bastard Sons. Yep, that was the show again. Wow, he Holy actually. Shit. Yeah, that's funny. But uh, yeah, uh, I'm gonna plug South Six. I'll give you a call back after this. Uh, but yeah, later, buddy. Love you. Later, buddy. Bye, Bye. Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> that was adorable. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Bringing it all. All right, back we around. were back. All of that, yeah. that whole somber point of the podcast, brought to you hopefully by Fleshlight one day. When we got <laughs> when we got super deep with each other, but let's try, let's try to talk about some happier things. We just played that show with. I want to shout out Black Mountain Moonshine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We it's the first time I got to see Squared play. A, a lot of the fucking bands on that show were amazing. Mm-hmm. That show was one of my favorite nights because I got along with every single band, uh, and we all, all talked. So I don't have a lot of shows that I just feel like genuinely. Like, man, I love my life. So that, that night ended up being one. Got to see you guys play. Geo fucking kills it as a front man. He's great, man. He's, He's fantastic. fantastic. Amazing. Uh, who else was there? Whiskey Famine. Also, like, fucking, like... So good. So good to fucking watch. Also fantastic human And then I got to... I finally got to meet fucking uh, Evan from Skull Drug. Like, oh, you never met him? No, I'd cool, never met him before. Like, great so guy. When I first moved here, like, I saw them play once, and I was like, oh, man, like, they're fucking amazing. And then, it, I guess, something yeah, happened. Yeah, Run Down Remates has an album called uh, Just Move... Uh, EP, I guess you would say, but it's five songs featuring a, a, eight different bands with 13 different people, and Evan sings on one of those songs. Um, and Justin from uh, <coughs> Skull Drug also... Does a good Shout out Justin, there. we're gonna have you on here eventually. Dude, you gotta to have him on. Yeah. He's been on my yeah. podcast. He's fantastic, dude. He's a great human being. Yeah, we're gonna have have that out. But yeah, like Evan, I'm fucking amazing. That show was just fucking amazing. Like, oh, dude. super fun. Too much fucking fun. Like to write off the coattails of the house show that we had to go into exactly, that. Exactly. Yeah. Like, it doesn't get much better than this, you know. And it's great because I feel like a lot of times, like where you are as a band. Where I am as a band, like I always feel like my band is as good as the last show I played. So if the last mm. show I played was a shit show, then I fucking hate myself and I like and I hate my music. But if we we're coming off a good show, like I want to go into the studio after a good show because I'm not gonna hate on myself. You gotta tell him. You gotta tell him about like so when we did the FOL Squared Christmas special, like it was just two bands trying to do something fun. Like you gotta tell him. Yeah, about go this. ahead. Like um, it was uh, the brainchild of our, our friend Dave Schultz. And um, he wanted a, like a Mr. Rogers style esque, you know, Christmas special. So um, we had a handful of segments, five, six, seven segments, something like that. With uh, there was well, there's meat bag making gingerbread cookies naked. <laughs> there was I need we'll to walk, see we'll this shit. There was, that sounds we'll lovely. Yeah, there was Chris. I'm gonna walk through a few of them. Sorry, but there was Chris <laughs> from um, TV Tragedy. Reading me stories while he was smoking a joint, I was dressed up as a like he's supposed a child to be with like, a propeller. Uh, like he's supposed to be like he was telling uh, me stories like of war. The crazy, crazy <laughs> drunk, the crazy drunk uncle. You know what I mean? Drunkle. And Tyler was supposed to be the little kid in that scene, mm-hmm. so we got him in a little propeller hat and all that. Stuff. I like how Meatbag just kind of like manifests at shows. Like, it, it's oh, yeah, start- I didn't even fucking see him show up, and then all yeah. of a sudden he was on stage fucking playing guitar. Yeah, he, he was like, I, I was the like, greatest. we were breaking yeah. down, and like I, I was like putting my guitar in my case, and I like look up, and like he was like talking to me, like at the edge of the uh-huh. stage, and he was just like, hey, great set, and I was like, where'd you come from? Mm-hmm. You, just, right. you just, you just manifest. We had Geo <laughs> as an elf creating like Christmas ornaments, right? What did we, we do for him? him? Making a Christmas sweater, so we had him hot gluing random items, Christmas items, to a sweatshirt. Can we all collaborate together, like all of our gear, all of this shit, all of your gear, and oh, try dude. to do something amazing yeah. for Christmas like that? You Bro. know what we should do? We, we should, We've we should make a comp. For you guys, I really want to make a comp. I'd like let's to make, make a comp. A comp. Let's make a Christmas comp. Yeah, right. an Inkbox sponsored Christmas compilation of all. Our favorite I like local it. Well, Yeah, we'll, we'll pop it out. What else did yeah. we do, Austin? Nobody's allowed to cover uh, Oi to the um, World, though. We did a, you no. did a Santa Can't do it. A Santa song. Oh, yes. Yeah, where so he it, played acoustic guitar on top of Aaron Jones's lap, dressed up as Santa. Yeah, Aaron was Jones that? was uh, Santa Claus, and I went on his lap and saying, I wanted my dad back for Christmas. He's like, well, I can't do that, but here's a guitar. And so I wrote a song about it. <laughs> on the fly. On the awesome. fly. Like 30 <laughs> seconds or so <laughs> yeah. before I said action. And uh, it was a hit. So yeah. we had that. We had a musical number great. at the end, um, like the sounds of uh, what was it? The 
What was that song from? Oh, I can't remember. We have to show you guys after this. Yeah, like, we'll check it out. So toward the end, sure. I want to make sure that uh, toward the end of these episodes, I always try to do this. Want to make sure these uh, the local scene gets a shout out. So I like to go around the table and like everybody to talk about one band in the scene right now that you fucks with heavy. So and they gotta be like uh, uh, somebody in the Phoenix scene right now. Yeah, yeah. dude. So dude. I'm gonna start. I'm, I'm starting off with Austin. We'll come around this way. You know, I fucked with run. I fucked with Rundown, but they. <laughs> <laughs> Just Thanks, bud. Leave it that. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta throw it at uh, TV Tragedy. They're, they're doing it, they're doing it right, in a, in a sense. They're doing yeah. it different. They're doing it different, and it's working. Hmm. And it's working for them. Uh, Mouse has ideas, and just the gusto to just push them in there in Texas right now. Who yeah. the fucks, you know, travels to Texas. Yeah, you've got a you know chance I mean? to work pretty close with that band yeah. in general, like yeah. between wanna, Joe, Mouse, Joey. Like you've gotten a really yeah. good chance to I work, work with, with those guys. Uh, Mouse again, he's got a lot of stuff in his brain. Mm -hmm. You know, he's just concocting it up. So, I hear you. Who who you rolling with? It's tough to say. Like I, I see a lot of bands that have always done well, do well. Like we look at Skull Drug, we look at FOL, we look at Black Mountain Moonshine. But I would say like new bands on the scene. Like we can't like overlook Whiskey Famine right now. Like, Whiskey Famine's great. Whiskey it doesn't have to be awesome. a new band. It's just it's yeah, a band in Phoenix. No, I want to like, shout out. Cause, like, no, like when it comes to new bands, I'm like, dude, you guys have to check out Whiskey Famine. They have this amazing regiment. And then if there's a band that you fucking missed, I gotta give it up for Mad Dog Tannen. Oh, oh, you stole Tannen, mine. You dude. fucking dude. stole mine. You yeah. Asshole. yeah. Uh, so I. So when I. That's was in, mine. Like <laughs> when I've been playing with Rundown Roommates. Like, I fucking love Mad Dog Tannen. The dude, name. It's the I best fell name. in love. Well, it's we're, the best we're, name. We're, They're uh, so good. You know, I come from the West Side with them, right? So like they were some of the first people to take us on fucking shows, mm. and. Um, they're good. And, and I need to get him in, in here on an you Inkbox. you got to get Brian first, in here. going to uh, get him here, in here wife, on an Inkbox. My wife and I's first date was a, was a Mad Dog Tannen show. Nice. Out in Peoria, yeah. Oh, that's adorable. That's absolutely yeah, adorable. Right. Let's see, who am I? Uh, right now, I can't say Mad but So Mad Dog Tannen, shout out. Also, there's another band I just started listening to. I don't know how I hadn't caught him yet, but have you guys checked the Spacers yet? No, I have not. So I saw them live at Yucca, and they're, they sound fucking phenomenal. Also, like their drummer goes hard as fuck. That's good. So they're good. So I got Mad Dog Tannen for sure. Like if, I'm sure, like I'm late to the party on Mad Dog Tannen, so I don't need to tell. Super late. I don't need so good. Yeah, yeah, I don't need. I don't need to, to tell anybody listening to check out Mad Dog Tannen. But uh, definitely, if you haven't uh, check, maybe I might be late on them too. But the Spacers, I really like them. Spacers. Sounded fucking amazing. Uh, they were the soundtrack to my 15 minute shit at Yucca. So. <laughs> they, they want me to do that. Who are you fucking with right now, Adam? So th this week I'm going to hype up uh, Afterbirth cartoons because they're just like super fun. I'm sorry, Afterbirth cartoons? That Afterbirth is, cartoons. What a fucking cool band name. <laughs> that is I've dope. never heard of them. Every I band name is them. cooler than ours. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, they're, they're great. They, they do a lot of uh, like sketches that are just like r super absurd. And uh, that's kind of like their whole deal is just like a lot of like absurd It's one shit. of those things that's like the best nice. thing about Aquabats, right? Like when you watch the Aqua Aquabats fight monsters on stage, you're like, this, just doing this whole sleeve, this whole, <laughs> yeah. somebody asked me if I'm an Aquabats fan. This whole sleeve is Aquabats. Isn't it the greatest thing? Yeah. Wow. Like, Fucking love it. Yeah. Nice. Well, I think we're getting ready to wrap up. So, That's so a wrap. Are, some of the highlights we got. Definitely make sure you hit up Austin if you want a music video. We'll put the link in the description. We're, yeah. we're hitting up Austin. Yes. We're, we're going to hit up Austin. Guys, thank you Austin. so much for having us on. Um, when I get set up, I, I can't wait to have you guys on. on Hell the yeah. yeah definitely, Silva. definitely check out the rundown with Silva when it's back up and running. Fucking our, our podcast, Homie Here in Phoenix. Check out whatever the fuck Adam's doing because he always looks good doing it. He gets to be the, right now, the, the beauty and all this. And then me, good. I don't know. You'll see me around. I'm doing booking now, so if I'm in, in your inbox. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We're going to end the show now. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> it was good. I like your beard. Your beard looked great on camera. We're shedding more to Dude, you were great. You were great, great today, bro. Yeah. Round of applause. We're so talented. I forgot to hit record. Can we do the whole thing? <laughs> yeah, I, I remember <laughs> it all nice. verbatim. <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to lie. It's not funny. Because I've already done not that. Not funny. It's flash. <laughs> Give me those flashbacks. You can have that one. That's a good one. I will. That's a good one, y'all. Oh, got a surprise call from Ricky in it, too.